Good afternoon. It is Monday, September 23rd at 3 p.m. I am Devin Bartolotta along with Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin. Welcome to a Tracking the Tropics special here on WWL+. Plus. Chris, there are so many questions yes. about soon to be Helene. Right, still a potential tropical cyclone, yeah. which there's a lot of new terminology and things that have been coming out. So we'll try and break down what everything means for you and try and answer all of those questions yeah. uh, through the next several minutes just to kind of alleviate fears, make it maybe a little bit more understanding. There's a whole lot that it's out on social media right yeah, now certainly. through the weekend. It's something we had really tried to stress was that we really wouldn't know with more certainty until today. Mm -hmm. We started to get that um, better feeling, not for folks in Florida maybe, but for Southeast Louisiana. We started to get that little bit of relief last night and then certainly today and we will again by four o'clock when we have a new advisory come out from the Hurricane Center. It's amazing how fast this is all happening because yes. it is Monday and they're expecting maybe a Thursday, Thursday landfall. landfall. So can you kind of tell us right now where this thing is going to go and what is going to steer it away from Louisiana? Okay, I know there's a lot of fear of these little tracks and you kind of see how the models make this little turn. It's going to kind of thread the needle through the Yucatan Channel, taking it right in between the Yucatan and the west coast of Cuba, and then kind of make a little bit more of an almost north or north northeasterly jog toward the Florida Panhandle, toward the Big Bend, maybe somewhere along the Florida Peninsula. Certainly all of Florida will have to watch this very closely because uh, note that the cone really starts from Tampa all the way past Panama City to the west. So really anywhere along that part of Florida will be uh, directly impacted by the center of the storm and almost the entirety of the state will feel some of the impacts of what will eventually be Helene. Now what you're seeing here is the 10 o'clock uh, advisory. Uh, well, the 10 o'clock uh, track, the one o'clock advisory with one o'clock data was still not yet had of a closed circulation, which we really need for it to be far more accurately forecasted. However, with that being said, models have come a long way in just the last five to 10 years. And so while we had been talking about this seemingly ad nauseum much of last week, it was because the models do a really good job of sniffing out where we might see some development. So they had always indicated we would see something trying to form in this part off of Central America, whether or not it was over land in the uh, uh, say Bay of Campeche, Southern Gulf, off the uh, east coast of Belize and the Yucatan. So we didn't really know exactly where this something would form, but all guidance indicated that anything that we're trying to form to the east of the Yucatan mm -hmm. and kind of move in from the channel would more likely go toward Florida. That seems to be what is occurring now, which is why our thinking is, and there were at a time kind of two camps, one that indicated maybe more just moving due west into Mexico, kind of did keep the rest of the Gulf in play or more toward Florida. Well, it's looking more likely, and when you look at the model ensembles, mm -hmm. Florida. You had asked about the steering. We're looking at kind of a ridge of high pressure, and I'm going to dive into all of this at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. but there is a ridge of high pressure kind of sitting over us right now. It's shifting toward Florida. Mm -hmm. That's going to help to move the storm kind of through the Yucatan Channel. That high moves out, and in its place, this deep upper trough, this big upper low, is going to move right in over Arkansas and Louisiana. That is going to prevent it from coming our way, but also make that more northerly to north northeasterly turn as we head toward Wednesday, Thursday, right into Florida. And notice the timing. Because this strong upper trough, it's going to almost kind of slingshot it right into Florida and move it in and out. So this will be a fairly fast moving storm once it does get into the Gulf. Now, because it's moving so quickly and because I really have not had that much notice because right. everything is still kind of forming, what is going to make this gain so much energy as it moves toward Florida? What, what is going to fuel this thing? Well, the, the idea being that the uh, upper environment over the Gulf, over the Eastern Gulf in particular, is a little bit more conducive for this to rapidly intensify. The upper steering or the upper pattern is going to be favorable for that and it's going to be moving over what is called the loop current. Hmm. I think folks first heard about that after Katrina. It passed over what is very deep warm water, so that's a lot of energy. Hmm. And as it passes over that, it actually, the, the loop kind of is almost elongated from north to south and it may kind of move over that deep warm water for a good part of its track, which is just all this extra time to gain this energy. So though it is moving quickly, 
unlike kind of the more hostile environment that we had for Francine, this is more conducive for it to rapidly intensify and kind of strengthen right up to the point of landfall. So that's why this and the, this one is looking <laughs> more likely to be on the high end side. Hopefully nothing more than a low end three, but certainly a four is within the realm of possibility. It's so scary when you do have such little time for pre yes. to prepare and you hear three or four. It's very anxiety inducing. It is. It is. So a lot. We, we were asking some questions of our viewers, asking our viewers rather to send in their questions so that we had the chance to ask you them. What would you say right now is the percentage that Louisiana might end up getting any of this? I mean, the percent chance of Louisiana getting this, you know, in meteorology and in most sciences, <laughs> it's hard to ever give anything a zero, but yeah. we're pretty close to a zero percent chance that okay. this is coming our way. Again, the window of opportunity is, is going to be closing very quickly once it does move into the Gulf. It's got about 36 hours before it is already moving wow. inland or at least near the coast of Florida. So that that chance is pretty slim within the the internal mechanisms of a hurricane. It's very difficult to forecast, which is why we're relying on the hurricane hunters to gather data, which is why the intensity forecasts are usually a little bit more uh, a little trickier or not not quite as defined. The path that the storm takes is based on all the image uh, the data that we get for the steering currents mm. that is pretty well forecasted and so the steering pattern would keep this away from us it would have to be a dramatic shift that none of the models saw for this to even move closer to us and right now that just does not look to be a possibility i mean that's good news for us obviously we're thinking Bad about news. our friends in florida and, yeah. and you know this this kind of looks almost like what ian did several years ago where it moved into the big bend of florida and for those that are kind of a uh, familiar with the florida coast mm -hmm. After Tallahassee, there really isn't anything along that bend till you get towards some of the suburbs of Tampa. So kind of like what Ian did, it moved into the Big Bend right along the coast where the mm -hmm. worst of the storm is going to be. That really is unpopulated. That's really more the mango groves, the, the, the marshier areas of mm -hmm. the Florida coast. So there isn't, thankfully, a large population. Okay. So hopefully, if it does have to move anywhere along the Florida coast, that's where it makes landfall. Um, we also have some friends in Mississippi who are keeping yes. an eye on this. Um, we did get a question from a viewer asking, what about Gulfport and Long Beach, that area? What kind of impacts, if any, can they expect? Storm surge, power outages, wind, hail, you name it, right. whatever. Uh, what can and they obviously, get? I, think, I think the concern in Mississippi is, well, we're a little bit closer to where this, this center is, mm -hmm. so what about us? Really looking at the, the pattern that it's taking, keep in mind we are on the dry side and we have a, a large margin of being on the dry side before we really see any quote unquote impacts from the mm -hmm. storm. We may see some spotty showers uh, Wednesday into Thursday. Uh, power outages, I don't foresee that. Uh, it'll be breezier and maybe a little bit windier, especially from Mississippi and then getting toward more lower Alabama. Uh, I don't foresee power outages really being a big issue, certainly not rain, and the winds are going to be out of the north. So this isn't bringing a storm surge. In fact, this is pushing the water from our coastline. This is pushing it away from mm. the coast. So storm surge in Mississippi and in Louisiana really not going to be an issue. The only areas that might see some minor surge would be the northern facing part of Plaquemines Parish. So okay. you might have that water coming in from the Chandelure and the Mississippi Sound mm. that way. But this is not like a storm that was to our west like Francine, where you've got that water and that wind building up toward the coast. This is coming in from a completely different direction. Mm. Um, another viewer question, will this same gyre produce additional storms? Could we see more things kick up as a result of this? It, it's possible, not really because of this, but early in the season and late in the season, and we're now late in the season, mm -hmm. we kind of closely watch that Central American gyre where you get these storms from the Bay of Campeche, Western Caribbean, Northwestern Caribbean, in the Eastern Pacific, and at times little systems are able to break off of that and develop into something like we mm -hmm. are seeing now with what will eventually become Helene. These are also occurring in the Eastern Pacific right now, and, and as I said, the models do a really good job of kind of sniffing these out pretty far into the future. The models are not sniffing out anything mm. beyond They're busy. What will be Helene. <laughs> this, after this, yeah. that kind of puts us now into early October. Mm -hmm. And once we get, kind of a rule of thumb here, once we get past October 13th, the, the uh, exception to that rule is Zeta, Zeta. Because it was so late, but that was a yeah. wild season. 
generally speaking, after the 15th of October, so now, you know, once Helene is done and mm -hmm. we're wrapping up September, the first two weeks of October, we still are a little bit more vigilant. Once you get past that 15th, that's when we have that collective sigh of relief because anything mm -hmm. after the 15th, have, we've never had to evacuate for. So we can That's still get we can still get low end hurricanes, tropical storms threatened, mm -hmm. but we're kind of done with anything that is evacuation uh, causing. So really August 15th to October 15th okay. is the busiest part of the season. Once we're done with Helene, we've got about two weeks left and then we kind of have that collective. Uh, I certainly don't want to jinx that. No, I, I don't mean, want to either. But, but we bring this up every single season. We look yeah. back at history. And again, that one exception to the rule mm -hmm. is Zeta. But even as we've said, Zeta isn't necessarily one that we would have evacuated for because it was True. so fast. And mm -hmm. while it was a three, it wasn't like Katrina was also a three at landfall. So yeah. you, again, it, it's difficult to compare storms even by the category at landfall yeah. because they're always so, so different. Yeah. So I know you're going to go into this more at five. Yes, um, absolutely. But we, uh, the overarching story here is that if you are here in southeast Louisiana or even in coastal Mississippi, there is no reason to panic. This is not a this is not a worrying story. Yes, absolutely. Friends from you know I'd say still Panama City and, and even maybe a little bit west of that. So all along the Florida Panhandle, mm -hmm. down through even Fort Myers, this is something you're watching very closely because even okay. again. It, it, you don't want to focus solely on the line or even the cone sure. because this is going to impact all of the Florida Peninsula. Okay. All right, Chris. Thank you so much. We always appreciate your expertise. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to tune into WWL Louisiana News at 5. Going much more in-depth yes. into all of this. And remember, you can always stream our newscasts on WWL+. Plus. You will also get the latest breaking news, weather forecasts, and up-to-date information on the tropics. You can watch us on Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and our WWL mobile app.